So now in the interest of time, I'd like to turn it over to Nima Kamal, uh, who will help lead us into the Q&A session. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Um, and thank you to all the speakers who have addressed us. Um, I would now like to usher in the question and answer session and encourage you all to um, send in questions and we'll try to address them um, all during this session. Um, at the end of this session, we'll also have a, Q a poll um, that we'd like to um, hear from you through. So I um, encourage you all to fill that poll as well. Um, so as you send in your questions, we have a few that already came in, which we will address. Um, the first one will be to Phil. What role does Everstrong envision playing in the enhancement of public-private partnerships in light of projects in energy, infrastructure, and health industries? Nema, thanks so much. Uh, first of all, I'm just going to deviate Ken and, and everybody else uh, for your support and good comments. Uh, we will follow up and, and invite you to our office, and I hope we can include our other partners, Gulf Energy in particular, excellent management team, proud to be part of their Athi River project and, and hope that we can do more projects, Ken, with, with BRITM as well as with Gulf. Now to the question, what role does Everstrong play in public-private partnerships? First of all, just touching on what a public-private partnership is. It's, it's a legal framework under which a, an, an asset, a power plant or a road or some other kind of asset is owned initially by the private sector and then turned over ultimately to the government. But it's not, it's not just the framework. A, a key component to it from our perspective is that the asset itself makes sense. The road has to have reasonable tolls that, that cover the costs of the road. The power plant has to generate electricity and enough revenue to cover its costs. The asset has to make sense. With that, though, we then go into the structure. What, what makes, what's our role, what's unique about our, our role in, in public-private partnerships? First of all, we have experience. We have experience being involved in public-private partnerships. I was personally involved in a wastewater treatment plant in California, one of the first of its kind that was owned by the fund that, that I was part of at that time and ultimately was, was controlled and owned by the city of Santa Paula. Ended up being a good relationship for everybody involved, the contractor, the city, as well as our investors. What else do we do? We, we also get involved basically in taking a role in putting these deals together. The framework is there, government allows public-private partnerships, but it takes initiative. It takes initiative from groups like Malele Energy who have people like Eric and Michelle and Jay and others who have experience putting these projects together. It's development work and, and Everstrong gets involved in putting these public-private partnerships together. What else do we do? Maybe the third and last point, we make sure that in the structure we're allocating risks to the appropriate parties. Contractors who, and equipment suppliers who provide the equipment to take the risk associated with building and delivering the equipment on time. The government entities take the, make the commitment to uh, provide long-term steady revenue streams and, and assure basically that the asset, if it's a road, that the tolls being collected are there and that they're, they're not going to change their uh, framework un, under the, the tenor of a, of a public-private partnership. Thank Emma, you. What's Thanks the next question? Uh, yeah, the next question is um, addressed to Henry and Eric. Um, with the exit of Blackstone from the continent, whose strategy and interests seem similar to Everstrong, how will you position yourselves differently in order to succeed in the African business environment? Yeah, thanks, thanks, Nima. Black, Blackstone uh, and, and others, I mean, I think maybe came into Africa with a uh, really high expectations in terms of going after really big projects, uh, throwing a lot of money at the team, um, but ultimately they were unsuccessful to even do in a single investment. The team that we have here, I've been working in the, on the continent, I started 25 years ago, Michelle, Jay, and really the rest of the team, and we plan on growing the team um, with local talent. Um, we're going to be pragmatic looking for the projects and investing in the projects that truly make sense, that are cost effective, that fit the supply demand balance of, of the particular country. I think the other important thing too is, is Malele is a Swahili word that means everlasting. 
we are here and set up for today, tomorrow, and the future. What that means really is, is that we are set up in the sense of being a yield code, delivering long-term yield. We're not tied to one fund. We're not tied to one particular investor. We're a company that wants to be here for the long term and invest for the long term. I think that by being here without the pressures of having to deploy in a very small amount of time and then being able and then having to basically exit, uh, particularly if we're talking about doing development projects, uh, that doesn't quite fit. I think the other thing too is we'll be looking at smaller projects. A big part of our pipeline is on the renewable side, in particular, run a river hydro, uh, small, uh, smaller uh, wind projects, solar projects, and build a portfolio. We'll also do the larger projects. Um, in Sierra Leone is a good example of how we would do gas projects. But I'd say more importantly, we're gonna be here for the long term, trying to deliver long term value and, and building up a business here in, in Kenya and throughout Africa with, with Africans. Thanks, Eric. Henry, did you want to add to that? Yes, uh, thanks, Eric. Just to add uh, a little to what Eric has said, uh, we have already made significant progress uh, here in building our deal pipeline uh, during the last uh, 18 months or so. Uh, we also have a local presence and uh, the essence of having uh, this uh, event is to, to show and demonstrate that we are here uh, for the long haul, as Eric has said. And uh, being local, uh, we also have uh, extended business networks uh, and our profile has continued to grow in the last uh, couple of months. Uh, during the, this period, uh, we've had a number of incoming inquiries and referrals, which are easier to do uh, when we have uh, a location here in Nairobi. And uh, the team uh, continues to have uh, and build uh, relationships with the local business leaders, uh, banks, uh, financial institutions, uh, uh, advocates, lawyers, all of whom have an important uh, role in uh, deal flow. Uh, so uh, we have also uh, secured mandates uh, for diversified investments across our focus sectors and continue uh, to work closely uh, with Milele. Uh, as I uh, previously said, uh, the Everstrong Kenya Infrastructure Fund will only be investing in operating assets. And so uh, having a partner like Milele uh, would help in uh, generating uh, new uh, projects uh, without taking the risk uh, for our investors. So we are uh, quite uh, excited and uh, uh, are most definitely going to succeed uh, here in Kenya and across the region. Thank you. Um, our next question will come from Amrik Saha of Media Advisors. Um, Amrik, go ahead. Thank you so much. And uh, congratulations to our uh, Everstrong team for your successful launch of your office in Kenya. We're so happy to uh, see Everstrong take this first step, major step in uh, on the continent and also uh, to work with you on many of the transactions that we are already looking at, uh, not only in Kenya, but across Africa. And greetings to Ambassador Calvin Carter, uh, CEO Mutuku, and our colleagues at Kepfake. My uh, question to uh, Phil is really about your work as it relates to our customizing a solution for Kenyan pension funds. Uh, you've uh, been a champion of working with local pension funds, and I think that the creation of your infrastructure fund in Kenya speaks to that. Can you talk about you know, how important it is for Everstrong to work with Kenyan pension funds and really expose them to more infrastructure investments in the region? Sure, Emmerich, thanks so much for the question. It's a good question. Why, why are we here? Why is Everstrong hosting and launching a fund for Kenya? Uh, the answer is, is pretty clear. I think Eric said it a little while ago that, um, uh, or maybe it was one of the other guest speakers said that, that a lot of people flock to South Africa, but the action is in Nairobi. The action is in Kenya. And, and there's a lot of growth opportunity here, but it's also in a, a market that requires some structure, putting things together in ways that haven't been done before. So one of the things I found, and Ken Canoe made reference to this in, in his comments, that due diligence for, for Britam before they came in as an investor in the Athi River project, and due diligence of investors who are looking at our $50 million fund for Kenya is an important dynamic. 
it's not just about the structure of a fund. It's also about understanding an asset class, an asset class that, that's different than real estate. It's different than government bonds. I believe, I've, made, I've certainly made my career out of investing in infrastructure. I, I, I believe wholeheartedly that it's a good investment and can create a good investment, not only for US pensions and endowments and international investors from outside of Kenya, but importantly for Kenyan investors who, who are uh, willing to make the commitment to understand a different asset class, to let them put the money into assets right here in Kenya. And, and that's what's unique about our Kenya fund. It, it involves local institutional investors investing into local assets here in Kenya and, and in certain other parts of, of East Africa. It's unique, it's, it's geographically focused, it is diverse in the asset classes that we'll go into, and it's also a little bit different than, than Malele. Malele Energy is going to be involved in putting deals together. They'll take development risk. Our investors in the Kenya fund want to have mature assets. They want yield, they want growth that comes from a growing company, but they don't want the development risk associated with putting deals together. So we have development expertise in Malele and in, in our Kenya fund, we'll look for, for assets that are project finance ready or already mature and operating. And those will become the investments in our Kenya fund. Good, good question, Emmerich, thanks so much. Great, thank you. Um, our next question is on Milele Energy. So I'll address this to Eric. Um, it says, how is Milele Energy navigating ne negotiations for a power purchase agreements with a policy framework that is often unclear and immature? Um, just to repeat that, how is Milele Energy navigating negotiations for a power purchase agreements within a policy framework that is often unclear and immature? Yeah, well, that's that's a good question. Um, I think it depends, obviously, on the country. Uh, so we try to work in countries that have an established regulatory framework, uh, even better so if they have uh, integrated resource planning to not have supply demand imbalance, which we're seeing in certain countries. I think uh, you know Kenya might have a little bit of that, Ghana for sure, um, in the sense of potentially oversupply. Um, so really it's about making sure that whatever project you're working on, uh, there's a lot of transparency with the PPA, uh, with how it was procured, uh, whether or not we came in early or late. Uh, so making sure that it, it uh, went through the appro appropriate uh, processes. I think, especially when we look at underwriting, you can have government guarantees, you can have all kinds of structure, but at the end of the day, the best risk mitigant is going to be, does the project make sense? Is it well cited? Does it have community support? Does it have government support? Will it lower the cost of power to the end user? Those are the types of things that we look at and then ultimately find the PPAs, whether they, and, and I think the most important thing here is, is that everything that we're doing, we'll be working with local developers, with partners that have laid the groundwork successfully with the, with the surrounding community with the government and then we can come in and help support that process by bringing in the best in class underwriting as well as the financing and execution capabilities. Thanks, thank you. Um, we have two questions um, pretty much asking about the status of um, our fundraising efforts. And so I'll address that to Henry and possibly just put the two questions into one. Um, is a fundraising closed? Um, and when do we expect, if not, when do we expect to close um, the fundraising efforts and what specific projects are we targeting? Henry, if you could, if you could address that, please. Uh, thanks, and it's a good question. Um, we are in the middle of fundraising, uh, but uh, it's important that I mention that uh, we have been very successful uh, in the last uh, 12 months. I did mention that we've had uh, uh, quite uh, successful meetings with uh, local pension funds, as well as uh, uh, international investors. Uh, so we are at a stage where we have received uh, uh, a number of commitments uh, from local pension funds. And we are well on our way to achieve a fast close uh, in the first quarter of 2021. Uh, we are expecting uh, 
that uh, because of the local commitments, uh, they do provide a credible uh, partner and a credible uh, message to international investors who are often looking for a partner uh, that believes or can see uh, the opportunities that are available uh, in the market. Uh, so uh, we should be closing uh, by the first quarter of 2021. Thank you. Um, we have another question that I think I'll address to anyone on the panel. Um, it's on how Everstrong is going to differentiate or how we're already differentiating ourselves from other players in this space, um, given that you know, there are often promises and deliveries made that are not met, I mean, promises made that are not delivered. Um, and so this person seeks to know how we are differentiating ourselves in this space. Uh, sure, I'll start. I mean, I, I kind of spoke to it a little bit before, but I think really the, the main thing is drawing on, drawing on our experience failing quickly as well, right? So as we look at pipelines of opportunities, the, the pipeline of opportunities, really being able to go through and find the best possible opportunities that, that we can uh, come into. I think working very closely with governments and lenders to reduce the amount of government, part, government guarantees uh, is really gonna be important going forward. Um, ultimately, we are gonna be a team based here in Africa that's fully built out, both here in Nairobi and elsewhere. Um, and I think having realistic expectations for tariffs and what that means for returns, uh, sizes of investments and being very open and transparent with our investor community is really gonna be, uh, I think, from my experience, something that uh, will be welcomed by the investor community. Um, I, I think on that point too, Henry was talking primarily about fundraising for the Kenya Fund uh, Malele right now, uh, we are also in our fundraising mode, uh, looking to raise up to $200 million uh, for the platform uh, from a multitude of, of different types of investors. Um, and I, I think that also is somewhat different in that, in that we're going to be a company, not a fund, not tied to any one fund as well. Thank you. Um, I think we managed to address to address most of the questions. Um, there's one more on um, a return rate and percentage IRR huddle rate that we are um, looking for in greenfield and brownfield um, investments. Um, I don't know if Henry or Eric could address that as we close out this section. Uh, obviously, the return expectations from both. Uh, the greenfield or brownfield or operating assets uh, would be different. I would uh, want to just comment on uh, the returns that we are targeting as the Everstrong Kenya Fund and allow Eric to comment about the greenfield uh, target returns. Uh, so for us uh, as uh, investors into brownfields and operating assets, we are looking at uh, an IRR of between 14 and 18. Uh, and this is based on some of the assets that we have reviewed and the pricing that uh, has uh, gone into projects and assets that have changed hands. Uh, we are quite uh, confident uh, that we will get uh, good assets uh, here in Kenya and across East Africa. And uh, happy that uh, these returns that we're talking about are US dollar denominated because uh, most of the sectors that we are looking at have dollar denominated contracts, uh, whether it's in uh, energy or uh, the transport uh, opportunities that we're looking at, as well as uh, in the ICT uh, space. Uh, so uh, pretty confident that uh, we should be able to achieve uh, uh, those returns. Eric? Yeah, so, so for Malele, we're looking at blended returns in the you know, 14 to 18% return. So that's on a portfolio basis. So if you acquire a operating renewables project, it's gonna be significantly lower than that. Uh, if you develop a large combined cycle gas project, uh, the returns will be higher than that. So it really then depends on, and that, and that doesn't uh, account for, for exit. Um, so that's really more buy and hold, but really we're talking about 14 to 18% on a blended basis, given that we're going to be looking at a very diverse portfolio across, 
across sectors. Great, thank you so much for your responses and thank you for all the questions that you sent in. Um, there is a poll that we'll be showing on your screens in the next few seconds. Um, we encourage you to uh, send in your responses and let us know whether you would like to um, have a one-on-one -on -one either with um, Manila Energy or Kenya Infrastructure Fund teams um, and speak specifically to the set to the regions that you would like um, to have those one-on-ones on whether it's you know whatever region in Africa um, so you polls will help us um, know how to reach out to you but we thank you so much for being with us during this session um, after the poll is done I will now hand this over to Phil to conclude the session today thank you yeah, thanks, Nim. Uh, I'm going to just talk a little bit, uh, leave the poll up, and give people a little bit of time to answer it. But uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody for spending time to allow us to explain what we're doing. And, and as we're winding this up, I'm going to acknowledge that there are a lot of people that we wanted to include in this webinar that we haven't had a chance to. So we'll do another one. We'll do another one, hopefully, um, first or second quarter of next year to keep the communication going. It's a challenge when we're having to operate in a, in a code environment. We practice safe social distancing practices here in our new office. We do want to have you come visit us in our office, and we want to come visit you as well. But in the meantime, we're going to use Zoom. We're going to use Microsoft Teams to reach out to you. I, I want to add another comment, though. And, and it was maybe my starting comment, and it'll be my parting comment. We can't do this alone. We need to have not only a, a good team, and, and uh, we work hard at making sure that uh, we, we have the right people. If, if it's not the right people within our team, it's the right firms that, that support us. It's the, the accounting and the, uh, uh, the law firms and others. I know a number of you are out there on, listening in on this webinar. Thank you so much for your co positive comments. I've been seeing them in chat. Uh, we, we need your help and we need your confidence. I know a number of you are working with us as we're still in a young mode and, and uh, growing into a, a long-term successful business. Relationships not only with financial institutions, service providers like accounting firms and, and law firms, but also relationships with first-in-class industrial companies. There are some of you that represent some of the companies that we work with out there in this webinar. Thank you so much for having confidence in us. Uh, I hope as things mature with some of the investors that we're talking with, they'll see us in action working alongside of equipment vendors, contractors, and others that, that also have an interest in seeing our success, our mutual success together with you in putting deals together and making good investments. Thank you so much for organizations like MEDA and the US Embassy that help get the word out on what we're trying to do. Uh, we, we need your help in, in getting the word out. We can't do this alone. So Emmerich and, and others, thanks again. I could go on and on, but I think we're going to end this one here now. I think the poll, is the poll closed? Okay. Um, thank you also for the, the team here, event planning experts. There's a team of people that are behind the cameras. And, and you've done an excellent job. Thank you so much for your help. Thank you, Everstrong and Malele teams for your assistance. You know who you are. You're, some of you are here in Nairobi. Some of you are in Darien. Some of you are in Sierra Leone. Some of you are in, in, in other places as well. Thanks for your help. Thanks, everybody. Have a good afternoon. Uh, if you're in the States, have a good evening. If you're here in Kenya or in other parts of the world. <laughs>